The theme of the chapter Lach Lacha is the first and greatest journey that Abraham takes at God's commandment to leave his homeland and to go off toward the west, northwest. And he ends up in the land of Israel. So the name Lech Lecha actually means you shall journey, travel unto you. Now the interesting thing, and in a way a paradoxical thing, is when you read the first verse of this chapter, there seems to be an oddity. The verse states the following, God says to Abraham, Lech Lecha, Ma'artzacha, Ma'maladatacha, Ma'besavicha. Three different ways God describes the place that Abraham has to leave from. He says, leave your land, the place of your birth, and the home of your parents. And then it continues, and go, go to the land that I will show you. Now if you read it, it's very strange. When you give someone directions to travel, you don't have to emphasize the point of departure. They know where they are. You have to explain to them, give them the address of the destination. And here, God does the exact opposite. When it comes to the destination, he's very vague. Go to the land that I will show you. But when it comes to the departure, God says, your birthplace, the land of your uh, parents, and your homeland. Three different ways. Uh, Abraham knew where he was. So what is the significance of focusing on so much on that departure? And here's a key lesson. The Torah has a blueprint in our lives, a powerful lesson in all our lives. Life is a journey. Lech lecha. Lech lecha means a journey. All of us will be on a journey from the moment we're born through the entire odyssey of our lives. The truth is, the Kabbalists explain that the journey begins even before we're born. It begins when the soul leaves its spiritual environment and enters into this world. But life is a journey. Now, we all want to travel places. Many of us want to reach great places in our lives, not just physically, talking psychologically, spiritually, emotionally. We have goals in our lives. Often when we embark on a journey, we find our intention is there, we really want to make a move, but we seem trapped. Many people make New Year resolutions, for instance, or other resolutions, and when they set out in the way, it lasts a day or two days, and they usually gravitate back to their old patterns. People tell me often about their challenges when they try to find a soulmate. You know, they, find, they think they find someone, they make another mistake, and then again another mistake. And people seem to gravitate always back to the same old problems. All these problems can be answered in this one verse. God's commandment to Abraham is the commandment to each one of us, how we're supposed to travel. The secret to true movement in life, if you're stuck, is not necessarily always the destination. You have to look back. Because you can, you can be set out to reach a certain place, but you know you have baggage that weighs you down. So imagine you're setting out on a journey, but you're tied with a, uh, with a chain and ball and chain to a place that keeps you shackled to your past. So God is telling Abraham, if you want to truly find yourself, you have to free yourself from three forces that trap each one of us. These are Artzacha, which is Malatatacha and Beisavicha, the three forces of subjectivity. We are subjective human beings. Number one is we have inherent self-love. We're biased. We don't see things always objectively. So you may think you're doing everything right, but you ask a friend, the friend says, no, you're doing everything wrong. So we have a certain blind spot. All of us have blind spots. You know, I have a guy who asked him, do you have any blind spots yet? He says, yes, but I know what they are. That's not a blind spot. A true blind spot is you don't know what it is. So that's number one trap. Trap number two is that we are influenced by the attitudes of our parents, of our homes. We grew up in our homes, the way our parents reacted, how they solved problems, how they loved, how they didn't love, how they treated each other, for good or for bad, created an environment, and most of us learn from that. Where do we learn how to problem solve? From our parents. And that's why we have much dysfunctionality, because when we learn how our parents behaved. If they behaved in an unhealthy way, we usually repeat that. And the third influence in our lives is our environment, society, peer pressure, social pressure. You know, there was a time that I thought I wasn't influenced by advertising. I thought everybody else was influenced. But the advertising has such a subtle influence on all of us, sublime influence, that it's sometimes hard to really uh, recognize. We're all shaped by the forces around us, the pressure, the social pressure, wanting to be accepted, conforming, and so on. So God tells Abraham, you want to discover the true you? 
You have to get out of the shadow of these three forces. For instance, when's the first time most of us really discover ourselves? When we leave home. But every child cries the first time you go to school, to kindergarten. And then when we leave home to go to summer camp or we leave home to go to college, it's not always easy. When you're under the protective shelter of your home, you don't want necessarily to leave. But when do we really discover ourselves? It's only when we're not under the influences of those forces that shaped us, even if they're healthy forces. That what it means to mature means that you're getting away from the forces that shape us. So the Torah says, this week's chapter dictates, that if you want to travel, and every journey, every life is, is a journey and a travel, you have to free yourself of these three subjective forces. One, your own personal biases, which usually means that you have to speak to someone who can help you see things objectively. Two, the forces and influences of your parental influences and home. And three, the influences of society and, and the pressures of that. That's when a person really begins to discover themselves. So ask yourself this question. Who are you? Who's the real you? Are you a product of your parents and your home and your environment? Or do you have an independent true self? That's one of the hardest questions to answer. Because it's hard to, sometimes as you grow older, you start realizing that you turn into like what your father was like or your mother was like, even though you, you hate saying that. Because we are under that of impact. So interestingly, that the Bible, so many years ago, God tells Abraham, this is the secret to real growth, to real self-actualization, to real self-discovery. You must get away from that shadows. That doesn't mean we won't be subjective, but it means you have to recognize that these three forces are constantly shaping you. And if you really, tr- really want to discover the true you, you need to some way separate yourself. You need to lech lecha, you need to move on and leave that past behind. When you're able to do that, you, you achieve the freedom of entering into the promised land.